And we are rolling. Hey everybody, my name is Dave Good. I teach people how to play the saxophone. If you're looking for a lesson, Zoom or in person, here in La Mesa in Southern California, of course, I can accommodate you. I've got a couple of spaces in the roster. Love to talk. Reach out to me at davegoodsax at gmail.com. davegoodsax at gmail.com. And I'll get right back to you, okay? So today's session is going to be on, well, I'm going to, I'm going to take on one of those one of the subjects that I, yeah, I've really gotten into a lot of arguments uh, over the years uh, on social media, of course, with, the, with various saxophone players, is the alto saxophone harder to play than the tenor saxophone? And I might, you know, piss a few people off here, but I don't care. It's my session. So my answer is kind of yes and kind of no. Is the alto saxophone harder to play than the tenor saxophone? Uh, you know, the backstory is that for most of you who are regular subscribers, and thank you so much, 441 as of this recording. Oh, man. I, I, who would have ever thought? But, but, but you know, I, I don't advertise. I don't promote. I don't even read. I have no script. I mean, we're just talking. It's just you and me, and that's all that really matters. So there was a little while back when uh, I had such pain in my right wrist, and that's, of course, the, you know, the thumb the thumb post hand, you know, the right hand controls the bottom of the horn, that I had to go see the doctor. I, it was just, it just, it was just mounted to the point that I, I, I got worse and worse and worse and finally, you know. He, so he sent me to a radiologist and the radiologist came back and said, you broke your wrist. Uh, and I have no recollection of that injury ever happening, but it's an old one and uh, it's caused uh, some osteoarthritis to set in here in my golden years. And so I became a little bit more interested in the much lighter and smaller alto sax. This one is kind of a bit smaller than, you know, most of the alto saxes that you all play. Uh, this is a Con a 6M, built in 1936, said to be the first of the modern horns, uh, I guess because of the key arrangement of the modern alto saxes. I, don't, I can't verify that. I just repeat things I hear <laughs> like a parrot, right? Anyway... Um, I'm using a, a Meyer, a seven medium mouthpiece, and I finally, finally uh, accepted that I'm playing an alto sax. I'm not using tenor sax reeds, which I think sound pretty good in an alto sax. I'm using alto sax reeds, and these are uh, Daddario Jazz Selects, and these are two hards, all right, two H's, okay? Using those, and um, the horns in, in, in marvelous shape for what an 86-year-old horn, I think, what it is built in 1935, something like that. I mean, absolutely beautiful shape, and it's got a great punchy sound. And, but I've always kind of considered myself a tenor sax player, even though I started on the alto sax when I was uh, 10, maybe, you know, in the fourth grade. Started on alto sax, spent a lot of time on alto sax, played alto sax all through, you know, uh, high school, uh, except for the time I subbed on baritone sax to be in a pretty good jazz band. And then uh, back to college, the, the, the tenor sax stayed with the high school because they owned it. On to college and uh, back to alto sax. And alto sax, you know, was the go-to instrument for years and years. Uh, the, there was a little brief time with a C melody horn, I know. And uh, and then I had a, a pretty cool couple of alto saxes, uh, maybe 12 years ago. Um, Chewberry, uh, Con Chewberry, they, they called it that, uh, alto, and a, and, a, and a pretty cool Martin alto, both of which I still, I, I wish I still had. Those of you who sell off horns, don't, because you'll regret it later, okay? Anyway, that's the... That's the, the back story is that, you know, tenor about 10 years ago, and I hit it really, really hard for a good decade. I mean, lots of gigs, a lot of playing. Loved it. Thought that was, you know, that's my sound. That's my sound. I'm a tenor guy, right? And um, and I think, you know, for, for the, the most part, I, I'm right. that I mean, I have a, an investment in the voice of the tenor sax, which is really different than the voice of the alto sax, okay? So that brings us back to the, you know, uh, how did I get to, to the alto sax thing? So I thought, well, it's lighter. My wrist doesn't hurt as much, although I've got some better, you know, uh, anti-inflammatories from the doctor. You can't take those forever. So I thought, well, you better get serious about this alto sax, son, or maybe take up guitar or something else. I don't know. No, that's not going to happen. I love playing saxophone, and so do you, and that's why we're all here together today. But 
So um, is this come up in, in, in sessions with other alto sax players and talking about, you know, why my tone really isn't, you know, what I want it to be. And that's that the alto sax has different requirements and that makes it a bit harder to get beautiful sound, especially when you get up past, you know, I won't, won't go any higher because it scares the dogs. And they're right here on the couch sleeping. But anyway, you get up in the palm keys and the alto sax and make that sound beautiful. I mean, I have many, many, many students who are in grade school who, who uh, sounds pretty rough. It takes a long time and a lot of, a lot of top tone work out to, to make th those notes sound beautiful on the alto sax. On tenor sax, it's almost automatic. The palm keys sound pretty darn good. But then again, the equivalent of the palm keys and the tenor sax are like, you know, about the mid octave range on an alto sax. Really, 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 really different, okay? Um, and so I want to dispel the rumors or, or the thought or the general contention around alto sax that it's easier to play and that's why we start kids with it. It is not. It is not easier to play. In fact, it's a very difficult horn to make sound good, all right? Easy to get that set of sure. Easier for small hands to hold, even big lazy hands like mine. Excuse me, I have allergies. I'm going to sneeze here. Hang it. Block the sneeze. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, the horn that we tend to start kids on. And it gets a little bit of that, you know, that, that, that shine that, you know, this is the kid's horn. This is the small, this is little, little people play this horn, right? It's not easier for them to play. Okay, it's just easier for them to hold. It's, uh, it's, it's really tough to get a fourth grader who's going to be able to hold tenor sax and make that work, although I have one. But most of them, uh, you know, most of the kids, and that's why when you go to you know, any large school band program, you, you get 13 kids on alto sax, 11 kids on clarinet, and one kid on tenor sax, right? Maybe two. No baritone saxes, right? Unless, unless maybe there's a, you know, a, a somebody in the graduating class. But that's, that's the size of it, the, the size and the shape of it. Uh, it. This is not the kid's horn, okay? This is not the kid's horn, even though it is smaller and it costs about half as much as, uh, you know, just comparing apples to, apples to oranges, about a half as much to get a, uh, you know, a reasonably good alto sax as it does to get a reasonably good tenor sax, okay? Uh, are you in the market? Are you watching this video thinking you're going to learn something because you don't play sax yet? Sure. What I would say is uh, go into the music store near you and rent one for a while. You don't have to buy anything. Just go rent one. And uh, why don't you start with an alto? Rent an alto and, uh, and uh, you know, just, just get comfortable with blowing the alto and see if, if, if holding this thing matches your, your mental expectations, all right? And then in a month or so, bump it up to a tenor sax. Try that and see if you like that. Uh, most stores don't rent soprano or baritone saxes, so, you know, the, the, the range is usually alto and tenor at the rental market, but, you know, that's the way to get started and figure out, you know, what voice is right for you. Okay, so anyway, a lot of years invested in the, in the tenor sax for me and thinking that that's my sound, that's my voice, and, and I think in many ways it is, but the alto sax is very intriguing. I'm beginning to really love the sound of the alto sax. It feels really good. I don't have that sore wrist by the end of the day. Although I did play four hours the other night with the band Blues Group. And uh, soloed on just about every song. Came home and didn't really feel the pain that I normally feel. So maybe, just maybe, there's a healing. But at any rate, let's talk about the alto sax versus the tenor sax. First, you've got this this neck right right here. This This is... What is that, about a 90 degree bend? There's almost no resistance, right? There's, there's almost no resistance to the air that you have to put into this beast. So the alto sax takes a ton of air. Air support is a weird word that you hear a lot. What the heck does it mean? Well, it means that your stomach is tight as a drum as you're pushing the air through whatever saxophone you play, okay? I should be able to come up and give you a pink belly and you don't even feel it because, you know, hear that, hear that taut drum sound coming up? Yeah, right, okay. So air support takes a lot of air to make an alto sax work, okay? Here's the tenor sax neck. Ah, exhibit B, my friends. Notice the swan neck, the, the, the crook in the neck there? All right, there's a little resistance there. Right off the bat, there's a little resistance, and that helps you 
Um, not have to, you know, feel like you're, you're needing to punch a bunch of air through the tenor sax to make beautiful sounds, okay? Now, you still do, but it, it, it's not quite as hard as with an alto sax. I think you're taking a lot more breaths when you're playing an alto sax, all right? Now, the second thing is, uh, and I'm a pop music player. I'm not a jazz guy. I teach jazz. I can play jazz, but I don't consider myself necessarily a dynamical jazz guy. Um, I didn't really discover jazz till I was in high school. I, you know, I always played rock, pop, uh, blues, rhythm and blues, gospel, that sort of thing. So the, uh, the tenor sax, uh, it, that voice of the tenor sax is much deeper and it's a little more mysterious. It can hide in the mix of the band. If you've got a bass, drums, piano, organ, guitars, all those instruments are in the mid-range. Well, so is the tenor sax. It matches our male voice range and it's in the mid-range right and you can hide you can kind of schnookle around inside all those sounds uh, you know in the in the lower octave of the uh, of the tenor sax alto sax no you cannot do that listen to an alto sax solo and listen to a tenor sax solo compare the two the alto sax is a much more present voice because what is it a fourth or a fifth higher than the tenor sax i mean it's up there you're going to hear that the whole time the alto sax does not do any hiding in the midsection because it's not going to happen. Tenor sax can do that. Now, when we play the tenor sax in uh, in a modern, you know, rhythm and blues or blues combo, you just basic instruments, uh, you know, I'm up I'm up in the octave range the whole time, and I'm on the palm keys, right? I'm on the palm keys because I got to cut. I got to I got to I got to get through. I also have I'm in touch with my altissimo tones, top G, top uh, G sharp A. Uh, I don't go too much higher than that, but on the alto sax, whoa, those are high notes. No need. I mean, once you get up to A, B, oh, the dogs are like looking at me now. All right, I stopped on high E. Uh, that's that's really really high, and uh, you know you can you can get a lot of work done in that range on the alto sax and punch through, cut in other words. The, the mid-range sound that the band is putting out. So that's a, just a, basically a huge difference. You know, um, and, and those of us who are playing both, a lot of people play both the same way. You'll see tenor, you'll see tenor sax guys double on alto, and they're up on the palm keys, right? Which is ear splitting and kind of painful. Uh, alto sax guys, you know, uh, have a, have a, play the, the tenor the same way they would play the alto. Uh, you can't do that. You've got to have two different mindsets, all right? Two different kinds of solos. You're in two different ranges. You have two different ethics, uh, your breath support, um, and all that sort of thing. Not to mention that the mouthpiece, right, the tenor sax mouthpiece is a little bit bigger and, I, in my opinion, a little bit more forgiving than an alto sax mouthpiece. Again, I'm using the hard rubber Meyer, the 7M, and I like it very much uh, for this particular horn. Um, so that's about it. If you have any questions, uh, again, you know, reach out, davegoodsax at gmail.com. If, you if, you, if you're playing both, and I have some students who do, and they're really struggling to make tone. And I will, I will leave you with a little advice, but if you want to dig deeper into the subject, let's do a lesson. Reach out to me. We'll set something up, okay? davegoodsax at gmail.com. Uh, long tones. I mean, that's really, that's about it. Long tones and... Uh, you could do them with a tuner. I, I would prefer that you do it with an audible source. I'd, I'd prefer you match tone to something you can hear rather than tune with your eyes to a tuner. But if that's all you got, that's all you got. Uh, just do that. Um, I think that long tones on any instrument are where you want to be. And, um, and start up top, you know. Right, make sure the note doesn't bounce around. Um, TE, Tonal Energy Tuner, has a great application. Uh, it's got an analysis button, tab, whatever you call them in the modern world, that you can put on and watch, and it, it'll, tell, it'll show you your note bouncing all over the, the creation, and you don't want that, okay? Whether you play tenor or alto, start up at the top of the horn and work your way down, okay? And again, we can go, we, we, we can really get into long tones. Uh, which I, yeah, you, you can't do those all day long, but you should do them and you should put a big, big bunch of time. And that's how you really get better tone on either of these horns. So I hope that uh, we have uh, uh, at least a, 
at least broken the ice on the subject, is alto harder to play than tenor? Yes and no. Kind of yes and kind of no. Is it very different than tenor? Yes, it's very different than tenor. Uh, from, from, from the ground up, from the octave, from the range, the key, of course, notwithstanding. But then the ethic of where the solo sits with the band. Alto sax is way up here, ain't gonna hide anywhere. Tenor sax is way down here. It can play down on the roots and the mid range and still come up. Okay, so th there you go. Again, questions, comments. Thank you all so much for being here and I will do my best to get back to all of you. We're at 15 minutes now, running kind of long on this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ring off and uh, go practice before my next student shows up. All right, have a great day. Love your horn, play it. Just enjoy the living heck out of your horn because it's, it's truly a gift, isn't it? It is the best instrument to play. Yes, yes, there I said it. All right, see you later.